today I'm going to show you how to make this cherry and almond loaf cake. Think of it as a cherry bakewell tart but in loaf cake form. I'll put all the quantities in the description but you're going to need some softened butter, ground almonds, baking powder, caster sugar, large eggs, self-raising flour, vanilla extract, almond extract and some cherry jam. That's a mouthful. <laughs> You'll also need a mixer, a sieve, a one pound loaf tin with a cake liner and some utensils. So I'm going to use the creaming method for this but if you want to use the all-in-one method then you can, you just need to double the quantity of the baking powder. But for the creaming method you just want to put your butter and sugar into a bowl and mix it for a good five minutes until it is light, pale and fluffy. Once you've got to this stage then you can mix in your eggs. I tend to add in one egg, give it a mix for about three to five minutes, then add both the other eggs to the mixture and mix it again for another three to five minutes. And you just want to whip loads of air in into this stage, making sure everything is fully incorporated. Now it's time to add in your extracts. I'm using vanilla and almond. Obviously the almond is there to give it that cherry bake or flavor, but I also like to use vanilla extract just because I think it balances it out really nicely and adds another layer of flavor. Mix that together just for about a minute and then you can add in your self-raising flour, ground almonds and baking powder. It's really important to sieve this mixture. It's important to sieve your self-raising flour anyway in any bakes, but with the ground almonds, you will see that once you've sieved most of it out, you'll be left with these sort of like chunkier flakes of almonds and you just want to chuck them away and stick with just the really fine ground almonds that have sifted through your sieve. Then you want to mix this really slowly on the slowest speed possible, just until it's all mixed together. And I tend to mix it for maybe less than a minute and then I'll finish mixing it by hand just to make sure that the air stays in there and I'm not knocking any air out. Okay, now for the jam. I've got some black cherry conserve here, but you can use normal jam if you like. The important thing that I do here is to try and sift the jam. So you break up the sort of liquidy juice from the jam versus the actual fruit. The fruit has a real tendency to sink in cakes, um, but I like to add some of the juice to the cake just because it makes it really moist. It gives it that hint of cherry flavor. So once you've sifted it, I'm gonna save the actual chunky fruit and with the more liquidy jam, I'm gonna pour some of that into my mixture and just swirl it around a little bit. It doesn't need to be mixed in thoroughly. Once you have swirled this around a little bit, then you can add it into your loaf tin. It doesn't need to be pretty, but I like to level it out a little bit. Then on top, I'm gonna put some of the thicker cherry jam, just in kind of like little splodges. As I said, fruit does like to sink, so if you do do this, it's not gonna rise like a classic loaf cake. It's gonna rise kind of flat. Um, but for me, I prefer the cherry jam on top and the flavor versus having the dome. Once you've done this, then pop it in the oven at 160 degrees for between 45 and 60 minutes. It really does vary depending on your oven. So you just want to check it with a skewer to make sure that it is fully cooked. And then once it's done, take it out of the oven and leave it in the tin until it is fully cool. Now onto the toppings and decoration. You are gonna need some icing sugar, your extracts, some flaked almonds, and the rest of your jam. So in a little bowl, I put some icing sugar in with a little bit of water, some of the vanilla extract, and some of the almond extract. You only need a few drops of the vanilla and almond. And it's really hard to give quantities for this because it's really down to the consistency of the drizzle. You want it to be thin enough that it will pour, but thick enough that it's gonna stay on the cake. I know that doesn't give much guidance, but that's all I can really tell you. <laughs> now you can just decorate it however you want. I like to add some of the drizzle side to side and also diagonally. I'm also going to put on some of the cherry jam. I've got some um, flaked almonds as well, which I'm gonna sprinkle on and then cover with some more drizzle because you can't have enough drizzle. I really hope you've enjoyed this recipe. Please let me know in the comments if you try it and I will be back on Saturday for another video. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.